Hello, this is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our top story today comes from the Chelsea Standard and writer Erica McLean. A former Chelsea area doctor has pleaded guilty to conspiring to distribute large amounts of pain pills in eastern Kentucky, according to the Kentucky newspaper, the Lexington Herald Leader. Anthony Junho Cho, who formerly practiced at Chelsea Village Family Medicine, will serve five years in prison, pay an as yet undetermined fine, and give up his medical license, according to the report. Cho was arrested two years ago after the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration executed a search warrant at his Chelsea office. Investigators said Cho along with two Albion residents, were distributing OxyContin, a prescription painkiller. More on this story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, wdeetv.com. Coming up next, sheriff's deputies arrest a man found in a stolen car that is a suspect in a Dexter hit and run. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next news story today comes from the Dexter Leader. No right of byline was given. A man who ran out of gas near Dexter was found in a vehicle reported stolen out of Ypsilanti. On August 8th at approximately 6.40 a.m., a black Suburban was in the caller's driveway in the 3000 block of Inverness, playing loud music and attempting to turn around. The driver eventually struck the house and fled in an unknown direction. On the same date at about 7.40 a.m., a different subject stopped at the station to advise an unknown person went to Bear Claw Coffee on territorial claiming to be out of gas. One of the employees allowed the male to use her phone to try to get help. After 15 minutes, the employee went outside to retrieve her phone, only to discover the subject looking at pornography on her phone. As, as deputies were en route, another call came in that the subject now had a gun. Upon deputy arrival, the subject was placed in handcuffs and questioned. It was later discovered that the subject did indeed run out of gas and was looking for a ride back to Plymouth. However, the vehicle he was located in was stolen out of Ypsilanti. It was also discovered that the same subject was the suspect in a hit and run vehicle versus house incident in Dexter Village that was being investigated when the call came in. The subject was arrested and transported to the Washtenaw County Jail. No gun was located. Charges are pending. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, WDEETV.com. Coming up next, an Ypsilanti Promise Scholarship Program is being drafted for Ypsilanti students.
Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next story today comes from the Ypsilanti Courier and writer Krista Elliott. A core group of community members and educators have been working for the past year to put together a college scholarship program for Ypsilanti Community School students. The Ypsilanti Promise, modeled after the Kalamazoo Promise, launched in 2005, would offer scholarships to YCS students so they can obtain a debt-free post-secondary education, which would be either a college degree or a career certificate, through Eastern Michigan University or Washtenaw Community College. The promise is a bold idea. It's a promise to promote the idea of academic success and to encourage students to dream big, said, Ke said Karen Gabries, Ypsilanti Promise Committee Chair. The committee is looking to raise $250 million for an endowment for the program. The committee is looking to raise $250 million for an endowment for the program. Gabries presented the preliminary Ypsilanti Promise Plan at a September 22nd YCS Board of Education meeting. The Ypsilanti Promise Program involves several different promises, beginning with the one the Ypsilanti Community Schools already made to its students with the consolidated when the Consolidated District opened last fall. The opportunity to graduate high school with college credits. The Early College Promise allows students to dual enroll in college courses while they attend high school, giving them opportunity to graduate from YCS with an associate's degree. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website WDEETV.com. Coming up next, a Pro Village group is planning to host an informational meeting in Dexter on September 30th. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Hello, this is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News. Coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next story today comes from the Dexter leader and writer Jim Pruitt. A group opposed to Dexter becoming a city will have an informational meeting for those who are curious about the issue. The meeting will begin at 7.30 p.m. on September 30th at the atrium of the Dexter United Methodist Church, 7643 Huron Drive. The meeting will be one of several held around town leading up to the November 4th election. The group is led by James Smith, a former village trustee and a current candidate for village council. Smith is an advocate for keeping things the way they are because he has not heard or seen any argument that makes Dexter becoming a city make more sense to him. Smith said the only argument he sees is that by becoming a city, residents of the small portion of the village that sits in Webster Township would not be taxed twice for police and fire. Outside of that, he sees no compelling reason to change the way Dexter is governed. Smith is also on the nine-member city charter commission that has fashioned a document that strongly resembles the ordinances that govern the village. He wanted to be a part of the commission so he would know what was in the charter and if there was a chance the vote went for a city, then the community needed the best charter it could have, he said. Smith said he hoped by going through the process of developing a city charter, he would see an overreaching reason to change the community from a village to a city. But the moment never came. He was pleased all nine members of the commission did not want to make drastic changes from the status quo. We want the same style of government that we have, Smith said. I was very happy to hear that. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, wdeetv.com.
www.yogaandmassage.com. Coming up next, a new yoga and massage business has opened in the Depot Town area of Ypsilanti. Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headlines News coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next news story and our final story comes from the Ypsilanti Courier and writer Sarah Rigg. A new studio offering massage sessions and yoga classes for practitioners of all experience levels has opened at 108 Pearl Street in Ypsilanti. Pearl Yoga and Massage is owned by Monica Bach, who grew up in Ann Arbor and has made Ypsilanti her home since 2009. Bach says she felt drawn to Ypsilanti after attending Eastern Michigan University, where she studied Eastern philosophy and ethics. Ypsilanti's Pearl Street inspired the name for the yoga and massage business, Bach said. Quote, I have lived in Ipsy off and on since 1999, and when I finished massage school about four years ago, I had looked at this space, but I was not ready at that time to start my own business, she said. I needed to cultivate my skills as a massage therapist and wasn't ready to take on that project quite yet. Bach is a licensed massage therapist and has completed certification programs through Irene School of Myomassology, in Southfield and the Assailing Institute in Big Sur, California. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, WDEETV.com. Now for WDEE TV headline news, this has been Tony Dixon inviting you to watch the next episode of the Michael G. Nasty Show this coming Thursday on WDEE-TV.com. Look for it on the Watch the Stream tab. Michael's special guest will be Ken McGee, who has co-authored a new book called The Little Brown Jug. You can meet Ken, get an autographed copy of the book, and see the actual Little Brown Jug trophy up close and personal this coming Friday afternoon, September 26th at the M Den on State Street in Ann Arbor. Take a selfie with the, with the Little Brown Jug and send us a copy. We love it. Thanks, and have a great evening. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free.